I'm vengeance. 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 Don't forget vengeance. The Oath of Vengeance is a solemn commitment to punish those who have committed a grievous sin. One who is enacting revenge themselves, or taking it upon themselves to avenge another who was wronged. What the hell? The paladin killed me! Their own purity is not as important as delivering justice. They're fanatics. Religious nutjobs, inquisition, witch hunts, that was them. However, there is more to this subclass than meets the eye. What if your oath was instead to bring dreams into reality? Or your own unfinished business? Let's smite the violin. Ha! Hello Acolytes, this is the Cleric Corner, and here is another episode of the Better Classes series. To reskin and reflavor your familiar subclasses to make them entirely new for evocative new character ideas. And of course, if you stay to the end, expect something for free to expand on one of these 10 character concepts. But first, what does an Oath of Vengeance Paladin actually do? When you start out at this subclass at third level, you can use channel divinities to frighten a creature and immobilize them with fear, stopping them in their tracks. He will smite you all. God will smite you all. You can also choose one creature and go absolutely feral on them, channeling all of your childhood trauma and getting advantage on attack rolls against them. Your paladin spell list is also very awesome with Bane, Hunter's Mark, Hold Person, Misty Step, Haste, Protection from Energy, Banishment, Dimension Door, Hold Monster, and Scrying. Probably one of the best assortment of extra paladin spells. But great thing about spellcasters is that you can always prepare other spells to better fit your specific character thing. At 7th level, you can hit an enemy and then move away safely without provoking opportunity attacks. Then at 15th level, you get further therapy with extra reaction attacks against the guy you're going feral on. Then finally, at 20th level, you can undergo a transformation that gives you a flight speed, an aura that frightens creatures within it, and advantage on attacks against anyone that is frightened. But when we take away the flavor text and just focus in on the mechanics, what other unique character ideas can we come up with? The Nightmare is a paladin that channels magic from the plane of dreams, their smites being a psychic attack on your subconscious. Dream, 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 dream. When they cause fear in an individual, it is showing an illusion of their worst fears, or creating a nightmare within an altered reality of their mind. You can then cause someone to be in a state of drowsiness or hypnosis to give you advantage on attacks. Dream. You can even be a Kalashtar race from Eberron, a juxtaposition of human and dream spirits. You could even be the dream or nightmare of someone else, looking to make a life or purpose for themselves on the material plane, wanting to become real, or perhaps born from the dream of the BBEG. You are literally his worst nightmare and the only thing he imagines can defeat him. The hubris of his own imagination becomes his downfall. Or perhaps you are the manifested dream of a party member, an imaginary friend, or psychic projection. But speaking of being psychic... The telekinetic proves mind over matter while empowering their swings of their sword with psychic force. They push, pull, hold, and empower with telekinesis, manipulating things with their mind. So you can move things with his mind! With this power, you can hold enemies still while wailing on them with a sword. You don't need accuracy, you just need a target that's not moving. Fish in a bow, buddy. Fish in a bow. You can eventually lift yourself in the air with your psychic power, and to really finish off the concept, it wouldn't hurt to get a magic initiate feat with Mage Hand to bring home the telekinetic feel. For this concept really is benefited with the spell list already given to you. Perhaps you are a Githyanki or other psionic race that was literally born with this ability, or it came from some aberrational interference. But sometimes you don't need to be all fancy and magical to get a good concept. Sometimes simplicity can be the most solid of concepts. The hunter is gifted in the art of overpowering a single prey. They target a single creature and vow to finish the hunt no matter the cost. Come on, get him! Get him, get him! Get and honestly, personally, the Oath of the Hunt is just a really cool name. But with spells like Haste, Bane, and Hunter's Mark, you already have much of a ranger-esque feel to it. But add the challenge of only hunting with melee weapons, and you get a character who hunts for the sheer thrill of it. One that may become one with the wilds, or even part beast themselves, as they channel their carnal self and go savage on their prey. You're an animal! 
but it just as well could be someone more dignified, one that tires of other big game and boring old hunts. Now they have a taste for humans. Like the movies The Hunt or The Hunted, they have acquired twisted pleasure in hunting down species of their own kind. Cigarettes in Arkansas only cost six bucks. You f***ed up, bitch! If that doesn't paralyze you with fear, I don't know what will. On another side of this coin, I could see a bounty hunter character paid to track down individuals and bring them back dead or alive. But if we have a concept for the hunter, what about a concept for the things that they hunt? The monster is when our paladin goes past being a little bestial and goes fully into monstrosity, taking on qualities of different creatures through exposure, monster parts collecting, or blood lineage. Let's hope it's a phase. Remember, our paladin can frighten someone into not moving, as well as frighten many individuals in an aura. And turns out there are a few monstrosities with these kinds of abilities. I can imagine a Thrykreen race, you know, insectoid, being much like the mean lock, fey creatures that are literally spawned by fear and can teleport around. Good thing you have Misty Step available in your spell list. You could also be a descendant of a harpy, able to sing a screeching ballad to stun your enemies while you pick them apart. I could even see you having an aberrational transformation like a beholder, casting spells through your fear rays, through eye stocks you keep under thick layers of clothing. But these effects can also be flavored to not be fear, but petrification. Imagine a yuan T race like a Medusa, or a Minotaur race like a Gorgon, each slowly petrifying a creature to hold them still and slice them into ribbons. But you tell me, what scary monstrosity would you channel? Comment below while we move to another creature type, the undead. The Banshee is someone stuck in the in-between, a paladin with an oath of unfinished business, also a really cool name. But their smites are the literal screams of a banshee reverberating through your blade. Ah! You could be the banshee yourself, stuck in the material plane until you finish what you started in your previous life. A ghost possessing your own undead body, or the body of another. You can manifest the horrifying visage of a banshee to frighten targets, and eventually float like a ghost. Or a banshee or spirit has possessed your sword, and you must finish their unfinished business for them whether it be mutually beneficial or you must complete the tasks to be rid of them for good. I actually had a player in a campaign have their sword possessed with their dead wife. Imagine your sword nagging you to make the bed or fold your armor right. But what if you played in the afterlife itself, the Shadowfell, the Ethereal Plane, or some dark afterlife or in-between place, either fighting your way back for your unfinished business or making a new life pursuing undead lords of the grave. If that tickles the back of your skull, then may I introduce Erevan's Guide to Death and Beyond, a massive 350 plus page tome by Arc Villain Games for a full setting that comes after your party TPKs. Either continuing from a campaign that you are currently playing, or starting out with the character's death itself with a level 1 through 10 adventure. Become new undead races with unique resurrection mechanics, graft undead gifts into your flesh, ride ships fueled with the souls of the dead, and use new dark subclasses, craftable items, and haunting spells to fight a plethora of unholy monsters and undying megabosses complete with their own profane layers. And if we are talking about paladins today, you might want to check out the Oath of the Jailer, putting the undead in their rightful place. It's time for this paladin to cast a 21st level spell, zombie whoop ass. Now go back Erevan's Guide to Death and Beyond on Kickstarter today, before your party TPKs. Link in the description below. And remember, death is not the end. But getting back to our reflavoring, I think the next concept will equally chill you to the bone. The rhyme comes straight from the eternal winters of the north, their blades so cold that it feels like a smite. As you all know, I'm a huge proponent of changing damage types for flavor, and a smite of cold is super flavorful to me. Winter is coming. But instead of causing fear in your enemies, you are immobilizing them with encasing their feet in ice, or causing an aura of snow and flurries that keep enemies from drawing nearer, or even using the flurry to fly yourself. The cold may just slow down your enemy enough to give yourself the advantage, mixing the icy blue with the blood red. You have either been born of the cold or imbued with the magic of it. But if not ice, then what other things can cause a creature to become immobile? The stinging nettle has power over plants instead of ice. 
They are imbued with druidic power to grow flowers that shoot poisonous barbs, or vines with microscopic slivers that temporarily stun or slow an enemy creature. They could even be poisonous spores from mushrooms or pollen from the trees. A creature may go on a psychedelic trip while trying to fight their way to you. Your smites may even be imbued with the power of the Feywild if you want to go that route, causing the fear of the unseely court to emanate from you, and teleporting like a Fey would. Be a Dryad, Eladrin, or other elf to bring the Fey influence home. But talking about drawing power from another plane, what about the plane of hell? The Pit Fiend is from a specific creature of the same name, a devil with a literal fear aura seems pretty on par for us with an Oath of Vengeance Paladin. Imagine being a tiefling with pit fiend-like features. Some other fiends with a fear aura include a Rak Tolkesh, who can actually change shape into a humanoid, wink wink, and Yinogu, a hyena-like demon, perfect for a gnoll-like character. But just seeing this as a feature of devilish influence opens it up to take your power from an assortment of different devils. Imagine your smites being powered by the flames of hell, and just looking like a fiend yourself causes others to hesitate about the consequences of swinging a sword at you. Tieflings and xenophobia have gone hand in hand in editions past, of course. It's racist. Be a creature with a devil's deal gone south or pick up a sword with a devil contained inside. But there is one more monster that uses fear as a trait, and perhaps the most famously. The dragon is exactly what you're thinking about. The dragonborn or other dragon-touched individual manifesting the frightful presence of their heritage, possibly even manifesting your own draconic wings at later levels. And bonus points for choosing a specific dragon heritage and changing your smites into the damage type of that dragon. Acid damage for black, poison for green, lightning for blue, cold for white, and so on. In that case, maybe even tie the rhyme concept with your white dragon concept for an extra icy flavor. And as a dragon, maybe your extra reaction attacks you get are from the draconic tail you swipe at an opportune moment. Dragons are natural hunters and something that all creatures take seriously. However, our next concept is something that you might take a little less seriously. The Catobleepus has such a special place in my heart just for its absurdity and humor. I've actually mentioned it in one of my other race reflavoring videos before, but imagine a cow fart so much and reeks so bad, you become poisoned while within a certain range of it and just might die of necrotic damage. <laughs> So in essence, you have a paladin that just stinks really, really bad. And that smell provides an odd protection as others are too fearful to get closer, just in case it could get worse. <laughs> this aura could come from your literal lack of personal hygiene, or you could be touched by the plane of ooze, or connected to a magical bog, or it could be coming from the stench of death with a more undead flavor. Just follow your nose and I'm sure you can find something creative. So whether it be expanding on these ideas or proposing some of your own, let me know your fun ideas in the comments below. But now for the part that you've all been waiting for, where we take one of these concepts and flesh it out into an entirely new subclass, then give it to all of you absolutely free for you to use in your games. But you will need to tell me which one. So like we've done before, you have 24 hours to vote in the comments which concept you would like to see. Then I will tally the votes and then put a link to it in the comments below once I create it. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you're alerted when I do. Last time with the Trickery Cleric video, we voted on the Duality Domain, a cleric that embodies two opposing ideals. So you can go find it in the description of that video. Find other subclass reflavoring videos here. And until next time, Go out there and make your worlds a better place. See ya.